Hey, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna tell you how to find prospects on LinkedIn without being spammy McSpammerson. Let's do this. Ah, LinkedIn, we love you. The yo-yo of social media, which one second can be really boring, and then the next really cool, and then really boring, and really cool. But no matter whether it is currently boring or currently cool, there will always be one constant. You mean connection requests from strangers and then followed by spammy messages asking you to buy something? Yeah. Mm. So instead of being that person, here's a five-step process for finding potential customers on LinkedIn without being a slimy douche. Number one, let's set some boundaries. Who do you actually want to work with? The majority of spam messages on LinkedIn are spammy and you can absolutely tell that they're spammy simply because they just copied and pasted and um, they're more generic than generic Mr. Generickson. So let's set yourself some boundaries. Who do you want to work with? Are they in a particular industry or work for a particular business or in a particular role or even all of the above? Remember guys, the riches are in the... No, I can't say it. Niches. No, I can't say it. Niches. No, don't do it. Niches. There we go. Number two, professional stalking. Or to be not so creepy, let's use LinkedIn terminology, following. It's still pretty creepy though. Think about it. Following. Ah. Use this fancy little follow button before you drop a connection request. This way you can start to see that person's content and engage with it. You may even want to create a little stalking spreadsheets folder with the links to all their profiles as a reminder. Other columns in that spreadsheet could include shoe size, favorite flowers, and how likely they are to date you or not. Moving on, number three is to drop that connection request like it is hot. Once you have had some interaction with them, once you've warmed them up, you may feel like now it is time to drop that connection request and connect properly on LinkedIn. They may even do this first. So high fives and fist bumps all round, if that is the case. Make sure you personalize your connection request if you really want to make an impression, said every single LinkedIn marketing expert ever. But it's really true, and then you can start conversations in the DMs. Top tip from our friend Joe Saunders. If someone does disobey the unwritten rules of LinkedIn by sending an unpersonalized connection request, don't hate them. Just scold them privately and use it as an excuse to start the conversation yourself. Simply thank them for the request and ask them why they wanted to connect with you in the first place since they didn't have the decency to tell you. Losers. Mm -hmm. Number four, or technically this could be number one, or it could just be a sole new list and a whole new point in itself because really you should be doing this alongside point number one, two, three. Or maybe just for an easy life, we could just call it number four. Let's do that. Create content for your potential customers that makes them feel either happier or smarter in either your LinkedIn post which includes video now and we've got a video on Red's channel all about that go check it out oh yeah or in a LinkedIn publisher too if your name is Bob you want people to think oh yeah Bob he really knows his stuff yeah. the stuff he shares on LinkedIn is really really useful to me and if Bob ever reaches out I'm gonna actually give him the time of day because I see Bob as a really valuable part of my LinkedIn community. And really, deep down secretly, I think I'm a little bit in love with Bob. And if your name isn't Bob, just skip to point number five. Number five is move your face off LinkedIn. Once that relationship is built, now you can reveal to all those people that that relationship was just completely fake and you were just doing all of that stuff so I, you could sell to them. Hang on, hang on, Yeah, what? I, um, I edited that bit for you, just... Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll say you did. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Once your relationship is built on LinkedIn, then maybe now is the time to move it off LinkedIn. You could maybe drop them an email or ask for a phone call just to see if there's any way that you two could potentially work together. That's, I feel like the first one sounded better. Hmm. So basically you have two options to prospect on LinkedIn. The first is to take your chances at annoying half the LinkedIn population and sending them spammy LinkedIn requests and sales messages until it makes us want to kick you in the face. <laughs> Our other body parts. Yes. Like the earlobes. 
Mm, that's what I was thinking. Mm. Or two, actually build up an audience of potential customers and potential referrers. And that's going to do you much better in the long term. Let us know in the comments whether you're going to be in camp number one or camp number two. And whilst you're down there, you might as well hit that big red shiny subscribe button for more marketing and boring every single week. He's been Andrew. He's been Pete. Go on, say it. Go on. Really? Go on. See you same time next time. Yes! See you same time next time. It's catching up. It's I can not feel catching it. Up. I can feel it. It's not catching up.